What we eat in space is very similar to what we have uh, down here on Earth. In fact, we have a nutrition lab that does a great job of putting together a very healthy, nutritious menu for us with a lot of variety. And so sometimes I think I may actually eat better while I'm up on space than, uh, than when I'm down here on Earth. My name is Monica Leong. I'm a research scientist here at NASA Space Food Systems Laboratory. I conduct research and development projects on future food systems um, for long duration missions. And I also support the Air National Space Station food provisioning. The American food system has about 203 food items on the menu. Um, we try to give them foods that are familiar to what they would have here on Earth. So we make them mac and cheese, we make them beef brisket. Um, they get all sorts of stuff to make them feel comfortable because when you're in space and you're in a confined area with only five other people, you might miss home a little bit. So we try to make it as comfortable as possible with food. So how much water do I drink in space? Well, I don't know yet. I do know that down here on Earth, uh, I drink a lot of water. In fact, I always have my water bottle with me, um, and so I'm constantly drinking water, and I'm anticipating that that'll be the same up on orbit, but uh, it, obviously it can be a little bit different, and I won't have my water bottle. I'll have my water, little water bag uh, with me when I'm floating around, but uh, I do anticipate drinking lots of water while I'm on orbit as well. They are allowed about two liters of water a day for drinking. Um, they are also allowed about 500 milliliters of water for um, rehydration of the freeze-dried food products. Uh, we also expect that they get some water from the thermal stabilized products um, just to make sure they have a good, healthy nutrition up there. So our diet while we're up in space is actually managed by the nutrition lab and there are actually uh, experts in that field that uh, monitor everything that we eat, that understand all of the nutrition uh, that goes into every meal that we have. And so without them, um, our diet uh, wouldn't be as good as it is and wouldn't be as nutritious as it is. So when we're designing the menus for the astronauts in space, um, we have a dietitian on staff who makes sure that it's well balanced for all the vitamins and nutrients that they need. Um, they also eat about 3,000 calories a day, more or less, depends on each astronaut, but um, they're given a menu, a standard menu to guide them. Um, they don't have to stick with it, but we've set up food pantry styles, so they go in and just take what they want for the day. Um, here are some examples of the food, so we have beverages here. This is a mango peach smoothie. This is a cinnamon scone. Here are some black beans in a th thermostabilized pouch. They also get tortillas, which is actually a, a very hot commodity up there. Granola bars cream of spinach, for example, candy coated chocolates, crackers. We also have condiment packages for them. So we send them up things like ketchup, mayo, Tabasco, mustard. Um, they just, they, they often come back to us and said that the food doesn't taste the same in space as it does on Earth. Um, they also can't have regular salt, so we give them um, salt in a bottle. <laughs> Some of the research that I do here at NASA is for the Advanced Food Technology Portfolio. I'm doing research to characterize food systems for long duration missions, including for the ones going to Mars. One of the problems that we have is that the food can be really heavy, and they also can take up a lot of space. So one of the countermeasures to that is to develop um, a nutrition bar that can encompass all of the nutrients from a breakfast and lunch meal, or, or lunch meal, and put them into a food bar. Um, there's nothing like that in the market right now, but we developed 700 calorie food bars that can just be packaged into one pouch, um, so it'll minimize waste, and it'll be lightweight, and it'll be easy to eat, and it takes no time to prepare. We're looking at other technologies such as instant beverages to encompass all of the nutrients as well. Um, there are a lot of applications for this in the real world. Um, for instance, it could help with disaster relief, um, some temporary hunger relief, as well as for camping and survival foods. So this is an example of what a Thanksgiving dinner might look like on the International Space Station. So here we have, we have some smoked turkey, and it's actually an irradiated product that is produced for us by um, the military. Um, we have cornbread dressing, which is a freeze-dried item, and it looks like this at first, but once it's rehydrated, it looks just like normal cornbread dressing. Um, likewise, we have the green beans with mushrooms, which um, looks like this in its pouch. And then when you add water to it, it looks, it looks a lot like that. Um, 
Here we have Handy Dams, which is a thermal stabilized product. So it comes in a pouch like this, and they just heat it up and put it right in the plate. Um, here we have mashed potatoes, which is very similar to the green beans and the cornbread dressing, where it's freeze dried and you just add water, heat it up, and it's ready. Um, we also have apple cider here, so this is what their beverages look like in space. For dessert, we have apples with spice, um, also a thermal stabilized product, comes in a pouch, just heat it up and serve. And another option for dessert would be the cran apple dessert product. NASA wishes you a happy Thanksgiving.